So in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, plane, the definition of plane, and uh, what is the general equation of plane? We are going to derive that equation also. So let me now tell you what is a plane. So this is the three dimensional axis and I'm going to take this surface. Now this surface is like a paper which is folded and this surface certainly is not looking like a plane, right? So what I will do is I will try to define using this surface what is meant by a plane. We will first take one point on this plane. You can uh, on this sheet, you can see that this point A is on the surface and I will take one more point on that surface. That point I'm calling B and now I'm going to join these two points by a straight line. So that straight line is uh, this. So as you can see, uh, AB is a straight line. Now you see that the points which are inside this line AB, the points which are between A and B, but on this line, they are not a part of that surface. So I will take one red color point so that B point I'm taking and I'm going to vary that point on this line segment. OK, so when I start varying that point on this line segment, that red color point that you can see on the screen, that point is not lying on the surface. Only A and B are on the surface, but that red point is not on the surface. OK, so what we want is that this should not happen. This red color point should not leave the surface when it is on this line segment. So instead of taking this surface in this shape, if I take it like a plain sheet of paper, then that will not happen. So you can see that this is actually that line segment which I'm interested in. And now instead of that sheet, I have replaced it by a, uh, instead of surface, I have replaced it by a plain sheet. Then you see that all these points between A and B are lying completely on that plain sheet. And this is the definition of the plane that here we are going to write. So if I want to write the definition of a plane, so what should I write now? I will say that let pi be a surface and let A and B be any two points on the surface pi, that surface I'm calling pi. Okay, and if every point on the line segment lies on the surface pi, then the surface pi is called as a it's called a plane. I hope that was clear from the earlier video that if you take any point between on the line segment, that point should also lie on that surface pi. And if that is so, that surface I'm going to call a plane. If that point does not lie on the surface pi, it means that surface pi cannot be a plane. OK, now we are going to derive a very important theorem. So I will write a theorem that every equation in first degree which is in x y z will represent a plane now what is the equation of first degree in x y z so obviously that equation will be I will write that equation so that equation I'm calling it pi that equation is a x I have to use x y z and I want to I want first degree I can say a x plus b y plus c z plus d you can have constant terms also and that I'm writing it as zero so this equation what is this theorem saying this theorem says that if you take any equation of this form that equation will always represent what that re it will represent a plane right so we know from about definition that what how will you show something is a plane so i will take two points on this plane 
on this surface pi. I don't know right now whether it's a plane or not. I have to prove that it's a plane, right? So let P and Q, I'm taking two points P, Q, a, a P and Q. First point is X1, Y1, Z1 on the plane, on the surface pi and Q also I'm taking as X2, Y2, Z2. And this Q is also lying on this surface pi. Obviously, if P and Q lie on the surface pi, they will satisfy the above equation. And therefore, I can certainly say that AX1 plus BY1 plus CZ1 plus D is equal to zero because P satisfies this equation. Similarly, Q will also satisfy this equation. So I can write AX2 plus BY2 plus CZ2 plus D is equal to what? Is equal to zero. Now I'm I have to choose a point, a point which is on the line segment joining P and joining the point P and Q. That any arbitrary point I'm going to call R. Fine. So let R be a be any point on the line segment PQ. And since this point R lies anywhere on the line segment PQ, what am I going to do is I'm going to represent that point. Suppose I'm writing it here. This point R is going to divide the line segment PQ into two parts where this length I'm going to denote by M and this length I'm going to denote by what? I'm going to denote by N. And now this reminds me of something called as internal division of the line segment in the ratio M as N, right? M is to N. So we know that what is the formula for internal division? Uh, if this point P has coordinates X1, Y1, Z1, and this point Q has coordinates X2, Y2, Z2, the coordinates of R are given by what? They are given by M, x2 plus nx1 divided by m plus n then my2 plus ny1 divided by m plus n and mz2 plus nz1 divided by m plus n what is this formula this is the formula of internal division of a line segment so i'll write internal division in which ratio in the ratio ms to n correct now this point r should also lie on the surface pi so what we want is i want to prove that r also lies on the surface pi okay let us have a quick video for this so that the proof will be clear so you can see that this p and q point segments are there the endpoints of the line segment r is dividing the line segment in the ratio m is to n and this r is going to vary r is going to change because when the point r moves m is changing and n is also changing you see you can see m is becoming bigger and now n is becoming smaller and accordingly, that M and N change will change the points R. So the coordinates of R will also start changing because M and N are changing. So this way, this R point varies on this line segment PQ. Right? But this line segment is a part of what? This line segment is a part of my surface. My surface was pi, which was looking some, which is this surface, which is actually a plane. We see that this R point completely lies on the line segment and it is uh, also completely lying in the surface uh, pi, right? That is ax plus by plus cz plus d equal to zero, right? So let us continue the derivation now. So now what we have to do is I will substitute this r in my equation of the pi and I will check whether that r satisfies the equation or not. So we will substitute the coordinates of r in the left hand side what is the left hand side the left hand side is ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal and i have to show that after substituting i am getting the right hand side equal to 
zero. OK, so let me erase this zero for the Titan uh, for the time being. And let me substitute the coordinates of R. So A into X is MX1, MX2 plus NX1 divided by M plus N plus B into MY2 plus NY1 upon M plus N plus C into NZ2 plus NZ1 upon M plus N plus D. And I have to show that this comes up to be equal to so how am I going to show that? Because already up got two equations. You see these two because x1, x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2 were satisfying this equation. So I'm going to call this equation one and I'm going to call this equation two. These two things are going to help me to get the right hand side equal to zero. So I will now collect, I will now make the denominator common. So if I make the denominator common, this d. I will multiply by m plus n and I will also divide by m plus n so that I can make the denominator common. And when I collect people with x2, y2, z2 to, together, I'm going to get a x2, m I'm taking common. People with m is a m x2 plus, then here I have b y2, here I have m common cz2 plus n times plus d also sorry d is also there so i'm taking m common so this dm is going to come here plus if i take n common i'm going to get a x1 plus b y1 plus c z1 plus d because n is common and now from equation one and equation two, what I know is that this quantity is zero and I know that this quantity is also zero. So in the next step I can write it is M into zero plus N into zero upon M plus N and therefore I get this is equal to zero. This means that the point R that we have the point R, which is this point R, this also satisfies the equation of the plane. Therefore, R satisfies the equation AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equal to zero. But R was any point between the line segment P and Q. Therefore, I can now say that every point on the lines of the line segment joining P and Q lies on the surface pi and therefore by definition we have mentioned above therefore by definition this pi must be a must be a surface Therefore, we have reached a final conclusion that every equation pi was ax plus by plus cz plus d equal to zero. Every equation of first degree in x, y, z must be a, sorry, not surface, must be a plane. Must be a plane. This was the definition of what? This was the definition of a plane. So this completes our derivation that every equation of first degree in the variables x, y, z must represent a plane.